what is up guys we are back on the boat and we're back to turning wrenches so um what i'm looking to do today is to address an overheating issue i've been having on one of the motors here on happy hours so happy hours is a 2006 341 meridian with twin inboards the the uh, motors are merc cruiser 6.2 horizon mx's the merc cruiser 6.2's use a raw water pump that sucks water up raw water seawater from the outside it flows through the engine to cool off the various systems the issue i've been having with one motor is that it tends to overheat when i get higher up in rpms compared to the other motor now the last time i went down and replaced the uh the impellers on the on the uh on the raw water pump i discovered that there was some scoring on the raw water pump itself which is made of a uh, a brass bronze type of metal and uh, where the rubber impeller spins around in there it was starting to create scoring um, on the metal plates on the housing itself so um what i've read and what i've heard is that there is an issue when that happens you create cavitation in there and the waters and flow is well through the motor so i'm thinking that may be an issue with the overheating on that motor so uh, i did a lot of research the pumps to replace the impeller pumps themselves the whole metal housing is almost a thousand dollars um, which I didn't want to spend that kind of money if I uh, wasn't even sure that was the issue. But I did discover one manufacturer, one small U.S. company that creates a wear plate for my particular pump, which Merc Cruiser does not make. They do not make wear plates for this particular raw water pump. So this company that I found, and uh, you could go to, on the internet, it's called MetalArtEtc.com. They're a metal fabricating like art types of what do you call laser or plasma cutting of metal and they discovered thankfully for us with these older motors that they uh they have a market for making these wear plates for these particular raw water pumps on these Merc Cruiser motors so i ordered the kit and it's a very simple kit it comes with some rtv silicone sealant it comes with the wear plate on the back which here's close up of it it's just a thin metal piece. And you can see how, why it was made by a metal art company. This is, was cut, precision cut, just for the pump. You can actually say which side goes towards the scoring. So um, it's, it's polished. It's uh, pretty, pretty, I guess it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, that's one piece of it. They also include a smaller ring that goes on the other side of the pump against the impeller. This is much thinner. Again, they are made in the USA. So um, they give you these two wear plates. This one is a lot thinner. It's almost paper thin. You, could, you, could be, you gotta be careful, you, can't, you don't bend it. But again, they tell you which side goes towards the scoring. But uh, that's basically the kit right there. It does come with some pretty simple instructions. So what we're looking to do today is to remove the raw water pumps from the motor, take them apart, take the old impeller out, install these wear plates, put in a new impeller, and we'll inspect everything before that, and then reinstall it all and test run the motors to see if it balances out the temperatures between the two motors. My port motor tends to run around 160 degrees. The starboard motor, which I think has the, the bigger problem, tends to run about 170 degrees and it creeps up towards 180 when I'm getting up on plane, uh, higher RPM, say around uh, 4,000 RPM. So uh, I'm hoping this fixes it. So stick around and we'll see how it works out. So here's a close up of the instructions and that's what the raw water pump looks like. Mine looks a little bit different from that. You'll see when I get it out. But um, it's pretty straightforward. You use the uh, RTV silicone adhesive and sealant to put some sealant around some of the scoring around the outsides of the plate around the bolt holes and that will assist in having this seal with the metal pump and then the impeller rides on this surface of the new wear plate so um this is the instructions here it says apply a bead of sealant Make sure you dry fit the metal plate before sealing it. Make sure you get the right size. And uh, let's see, it should be pretty simple once we 
get this pump out, the hardest part, of course, is getting the pump out and reinstalling it. Okay, so now we're down in the bilge, the engine room, and that pulley right there is the raw water pump. So uh, we need to take off this accessory belt. The belt is removed by just loosening the tension pulley over here, removing that accessory belt, and then removing the bolts that secure that pump. The easiest way to do this I found, and I've done it a number of different ways, is to just completely remove the bracket. So taking out these two bolts here, and I think that's it, just those two bolts, pull those out. One's a stud, but it, last time I did this, the whole stud came out, but either way. So then this pump will drop down, and then you can get, there's two hoses on the back side uh, for the raw, raw water inlet, and then the outlet for the pump. Okay, we have the pump out where we could work on it. Now, what's next is you need to remove this bracket. So you have one bolt here. You have two bolts in the back holding the bracket on. And then after we get that off, we need to get the rest of these bolts. We got one there. There's one, two here, and this one over here. And then the whole rear part of the housing will come off. And we can get to the impeller, which is inside here. bracket see the housing just fell apart and here we go so this is the part with the scoring you can see it's got a bit of an indentation there don't know if that's enough to cause any cavitation or not but I could find no other reasons that this motor would be overheating a little bit more than the other. I've changed the thermostat, I've flushed all the cooling, the, the heat exchanger, so uh, and the impeller, which I'm going to show you in a minute, is in good shape, because I've checked that. But being I did all this work, I'm going to replace the impeller, I'll of course replace this Mickey Mouse looking o-ring and get that impeller out. So the impeller's in we're in good shape. There's no cracked ends. I could probably keep using this, but having it all apart, might as well replace it. So here's the other part of the housing. There is some light scoring down here. That's the second plate that comes with the kit that you put down in there. And other than that light scoring, you know, who knows? It looks worse on the cap. So uh, we'll dry these up, clean them up, and start test fitting those plates. Okay, here's our two wear plates. There you go. So you got a new wear surface. That thing doesn't really even move in there. So that's the wear surface for the impeller on one side. And this would be the new wear surface for the impeller here, as opposed to that. All right, let's dry these up and read the instructions as far as where to put the silicone. Okay, we have our clear RTV silicone adhesive and sealant that came with the kit. And here's our instructions. It says, important, dry fit the wear plate before attaching it with sealant to the scored pump housing. They are not symmetrical, as we found out. Apply a 1 8 inch bead of sealant, supplied 1 ounce tube of Pro Seal around the perimeter of the housing as shown here. So we want to get around all the bolt holes and the entire perimeter all around there. Then just press the wear plate into place and reassemble the pump using the original hardware. 
It's a good idea to also apply a bead of sealant to fill the area previously scored by the impeller. So all around in here, it says here if this is a complete kit, it includes a small inner wear plate as well, which is what we have. Also dry fit that wear plate into the pump for proper fitment before applying sealant. A small bead should be fine and when assembling the pump, the impeller should seat it in its place. Okay, pretty straightforward. We just want to smear it all on there. We'll just put a little around here. Alright. There it is. It's looking all nice and shiny. Okay, we'll let that sit for a few minutes, I guess. Let's work on this one. So this one needs a better bead. So we're going to use the tube for this one. All right, so here we have a new impeller kit. Here's the number for you guys with the same motors. Actually got this on Amazon. I will leave a link. They're not too expensive, They're like 35 bucks. So it comes with a new Mickey Mouse O-ring and the new impeller. So before installing this, it's a good idea to get just some regular dish detergent and lubricate up the impeller. Makes it easier to go in and when you first start it up it creates less friction on the dry parts and it keeps your impeller from burning up getting seized and cracking and overheating before the water gets to it so just lather it up nice. Here's our pump. Now it's it's notched. The impeller is notched. It could only fit on the shaft one direction. Put a little loop on there. So what I found, you can see here, the shaft doesn't spin. The notches, the keyed part of the impeller, needs to go straight down. But what I found is if you spin the housing as pushing pushing down on it, it will. Go right in. It doesn't matter which way you spin it, as long as the key is okay. Here you go. All right, some colors in there. It's spinning around. It's up against that new wear plate. Make sure it's pressed all the way in. You can see it spins nice and freely. And everybody says it's got to go a certain direction with the way the motor is spinning, but it will flop around the other way. So don't be so concerned about that. See how easily it flips back and forth. So that's that, especially when it's lubricated with the detergent soap. So I'm also going to add some of this soap to the O-ring. It helps keep it in its place just as you're reassembling. And it fits in there. This will be sealing up against the new wear plate. Moment of truth. A new wear plate. And just center it right on there. Hand tighten a few of the bolts.
All right, and lastly, this bolt, which I'm hearing sometimes you may have to drill this out a little bigger if it doesn't fit correctly because of the extra one eighth of an inch. Just drill that out a little bit further up that way. See how that does. All right, let's see how it does now. set. Let's get her installed. All right, my GoPro went dead, so I'm going to do this fast forward mode. And here is everything put back together with our new belt. Our pump is installed. Everything seems good. We're going to test run it and check for leaks. Okay, you don't want to forget to open up the through hole valve before starting the engine. All right, let's start her up. That is the water pressure that's measured from the raw water inlet. See what it goes up to. It may take a few seconds after we start it. That's good, we got water. Now let's sort of warm up and check for leaks. Sounds good. It was nice and cold here where the raw water is going in to cool the exhaust elbow here. It's nice and cool. All right, we got both motors running. I got them both warmed up to operating temperature. We got 161 on the port motor and 163 on the starboard motor. So that's a good sign, at least at idle. I'm gonna bring it up to about 1500 and see what the motors do, the temperatures then. So the starboard motor, one on the right, is the one where we put the wear plate in that we were having the overheating issue. All right, two motors are evening out. I got 150 degrees on the port, 163 on the starboard at the same RPM. So uh, it's only five degree difference, not too bad. We'll really need to see it when it's out running up on plane. So uh, that's a test for another day. All right, so that's it. Uh, apparently this kit from Metal Art, etc., does work. At least it does work in the, in the respect that it fits. It doesn't leak. And, um, you know, the uh, jury's still out. I'll be taking it for a ride, but, um, but so far so good. No issues, I should say. Um, so it, and it definitely seals up that scoring. So uh, if you have really bad scoring, don't go spending seven, $800 on a new pump housing. Just pick up this kit and um, it should solve your issue. So more to follow on this. Thanks for following along and we'll see you next time.